Good morning, everybody. Welcome. We're so glad you got out this morning. I was going to break my old car for the Cars and Coffee, and I woke up to rain. I wasn't thinking it was supposed to rain today, but if you brought your car, I'm impressed. And thank you for coming. Thank you for coming out this morning uh, for our monthly tread talk. Uh, my name is Doug Malone. I'm the Director of Vehicle Operations and Curator here at the museum. And we're so glad to have you here. I know a lot of you are here every month, and we really appreciate the support. Hey, we're so honored this morning to have with us Jim and Linda Moeller uh, here, and his wife Linda sitting right down here. Um, Jim and Linda have been married for 34 years. Uh, they live in St. George, Kansas. They have five children, 11 grandchildren. Um, Jim was an oral surgeon for many years, uh, practiced with the military for 12 years and in Manhattan here for 26 years, retired in 2016, I believe he told me. Uh, his wife, Linda, a special ed teacher, and she was also the CFO for Jim's uh, medical practice for a number of years. Uh, they own a small museum by St. George in their home and in the company buildings there. Uh, they're working on an Airbnb. They have 11 cars in their collection. See, honey, two's not that many, so. <laughs> Some of the cars that they have are a 1961 Chrysler Newport, 1962 Chrysler 300H, 1962 Chrysler 300, 1965 Ford Mustang, 1966 Corvette, 1966 Dodge Charger, 1968 Imperial Convertible, 1969 Plymouth GTX, one he's going to talk about, 69 Dodge Coronet RT, 79 Chrysler 300, you may have seen that last year, it was on display here in the museum. Another 1979 Chrysler 300. So you can see he's kind of a Mopar guy, but he also is not just Mopar, has some other things. We've attended a number of major car shows, including the Boca Raton Concourse, the Greenwich Concourse, the AACA Nationals, Chrysler National, Chrysler Carlisle. So anyway, pretty impressive uh, collection of cars, pretty impressive uh, number of shows that they've entered in. Um, Jim and Linda are active with our local Norva Classics Car Club. They've been great uh, supporters of our museum. So anyway, please give Jim and Linda a warm welcome this morning. Well, good morning. Is this on? Yeah, you got to hold it clear. Oh, clear up? Okay. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, this show got, or this talk got serious about an hour ago. We got here at 10 o'clock and all these people were here, so uh, that made it real serious. So um, I, we can go in a lot of different directions, but what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to start out by talking about some of the things that are unique to this car in 69 to give you that information. And then I was going to talk about some of the awards that we received and some of the shows that we've gone to. A lot of this stuff could be a day talk in itself, so to run through all that stuff in an hour makes it really difficult. But we'll be here afterwards in case people have any questions or anything. And uh, none of this would be possible without my wife, Linda. She's the uh, driver of all this stuff. So um, I've been very fortunate. Our first date was to church, and our second date was to a car show. So I knew she was the one, you know. So <laughs> anyway, so um, I'll start out with the car real quickly. Um, I wrote some of these things down. I've been doing some studying. Depending what you read, there's all sorts of, of numbers as to how many they made. There's the Chrysler, that red book for Chrysler, and in there it says they made 624 of them. And then in uh, some of the other books I read, uh, the, the most I read was 1,050. So it's somewhere in that number of the cars that were made. Um, in 1969, uh, they deleted the, the side stripe from 68, and they put the blacked out uh, rocker. And the rocker, instead of having the, the um, stripe up on the side of the car, the stripe was moved to the rocker. And then, um, the wheels on this car are the, the new road wheels for that year. And instead of the trim rim being uh, polished like it was from 70 on in 69, it was a matte finish, and it was a one year only that they were matte. So they're really difficult to find those uh, if you need to find a set for one of these. And then the, the trim rims, that is. Um, they reproduce the wheel, but they don't reproduce the trim rim. Uh, they had, if you look on the inside, the shifter was different. It was an H-shaped uh, uh, shifter with a knob on it. That was in 69 only, and it was a Hurst shifter. And in 70, they went to the pistol grip shifter. So that was the change there. Uh, we, we bought this car in uh, Hershey at the, in, from the car uh, corral at Hershey, uh, Chrysler's Hershey, in uh, 2010. Um, when I was walking through the car corral, this car stood out from all the other cars just because of the color combination, the orange and the white. Um, it, was in, uh, it had been, quote, unquote, restored when we bought it. 
like walking around the car, I knew that it wasn't uh, restored to the level that I liked them. And uh, it was going to take an, another restoration, so we were able to buy it at a price where we could still put the money in it and restore, restore it and still be above water on it. So the car was restored in, in, from uh, 2017 to 2019 by Joe Litwin in uh, Hamburg, New York, and he did the entire restoration. He just does the body work, the paint, interior engine, the everything. He does it all himself. He's a Mopar fanatic and uh, went through the car and we took it apart. We documented as much as we could. The car is a four-speed and we questioned whether it was a four-speed or not, but it had a four-speed uh, floor pan in it from the factory. So that led us to believe that the four-speed is probably correct for the car. Um, as best we could tell, the only color paint we found on the body was the orange. So it, I, we assume it was a vitamin C orange car from the factory because we didn't see any other colors when they took it apart. Um, he uh, <clears throat> has, a, has a Chrysler book where it lists all the bold head markings and everything and replaced everything with the correct Chrysler head marking bolts on it. And everything was either NOS or, um, or restored original parts when we put the car back together again. It was finished in February, I mean, in uh, I stop and think, uh, September of 2019. We picked the car up on Tuesday and drove it on Wednesday to, uh, uh, to the AACA uh, Hershey meet in uh, uh, the following weekend. So we, went, we had from uh, Wednesday to uh, Saturday to find any problems with it. We showed it uh, that year and uh, and received our junior award from the AACA, and that's where we were approached by uh, Charles, and I'll show you a picture of Charles later, and he asked us we be willing to participate in the Greenwich uh, Car Show, and that's when we st first started our concourse car show circuit, so um, that's how we got in involved with the concourse shows. The uh, rectangular uh, side lights were changed from 68, and they were, they were carried through through the 70s, and let's see. Oh, the vitamin C paint that it has on it, that was released to the Belvedere line in April of 1969, and this car has a build date of April 11th, 1969. And uh, so there's very few of the cars that had the vitamin C orange just because it wasn't available. And when we've shown it, uh, judges seem to think that it could be one of one cars. And the uh, uh, blacked out hood was an option. The paint on the blacked out hood, a lot of times you see these cars, are, they're painted flat black. That's not, that's not a correct paint color for the, for the Chryslers. It was, it, the flat black is just flat. The, the paint so, itself is flat, but if you look at this, it has a texture to the finished paint, and, it's, and it's, the paint is called Organosol. And Joe Litwin went, did a lot of research and a lot of work to, to get it as close to factory as possible, and I think he did an excellent job on the, the black uh, finish on the hood. I think that's enough for the car right now. The uh, other thing that I was going to go through is some of the car show things that we've been involved with. We have a, I have a sign there for Boca Raton. That's the number three concourse show in the nation. And the, the number uh, one show is the, the one in, Flor in uh, California, um, Pebble Beach. So after we finished with Boca, Ra uh, Boca Raton, we were going to apply to Pebble Beach. But the year that we wanted to apply, they didn't have a muscle car class. So we couldn't, we couldn't apply. And we're gonna, we'll have to apply in, for a future event. But that's the number one show is the one in, in California. It's the one everybody wants to get to. So anyway, this is a picture of Lynn and I in, the, in, in front of the hotel in Boca Raton. Uh, that's the day before the car show. Uh, we both look kind of fat there. We're not that fat. Uh, the reason is I, I'm not a tech, non-technological person, but each of these slides, I had to enlarge them to fit the, the, the screen. So uh, I didn't notice it at first, but my daughter has since told me how to do it the correct way. But anyway, that's why we look fat. So. <laughs> We're not fat people, so anyway. So let's see here. So um, we were going to stay at the hotel in Boca Raton. It's a beautiful hotel, has a beautiful lobby, beautiful restaurants, $895 a night. So we decided after that, that we'd have to stay somewhere else. So, but anyway, at least got our picture in front of it. So, and then this is the, the there's a boulevard in front of the, the, the show is on the uh, putting, uh, the driving green for the uh, golf course for Boca Raton. And this is a boulevard, two-lane boulevard in front of that uh, uh, green. And you unload the cars in the street. So this, we got up really early on that morning to take the car over and unload it. Um, we could have left it overnight on the show, uh, show field, but we, we didn't feel comfortable doing that. So anyway, so we got there early. And the reason that was kind of a good thing and unloaded the car. 
this is the, the boulevard was almost completely lined with cars uh, later in the morning, and it was real difficult to get them unloaded and get them to the sh show field later on, but there's just a lot of cars there and a lot of beautiful cars. This is us on the show field, so you can see this is the, this is the golf course where the, car, where the cars were, and it's, it goes way over here and way over there, but this is just the, the small area where they were doing the muscle cars. And there's someone left their car overnight. The only thing is they have a car cover on it, but you're right close to the ocean. And uh, I don't know, we just didn't feel comfortable with po possibilities of rain and weather and things. So we just we kept the car in the trailer until we had it on the show field. This is Joe Litwin, the young man that restored the car for us. And uh, he's been with us at uh, all the, the shows that we've gone to since it's his car and his restoration. So we wanted to make sure he got credit for what he had done for it. But, He's a great young man. He's in his, his, in his 30s and, uh, like I said, a Mopar fanatic, and he does everything. And that's really unusual in a, in a young person, and we're glad to, or we were happy to take him with us and let people know that young people are, there are young people who are in, in, interested in these uh, older cars. So we were getting everything out to get ready to prep the car. And this is the judges. The, there's five of them. One, two, three, four, five. And... Uh, they spent probably 20 minutes going over the car. Each judge does a separate area. And this judge was the head judge. And after they got kind of started, he took me aside and asked me about kind of the history of the car. And then he said to me, he said, he said you know, he said, this is a girl car. And I said, really, what do you mean by that? And he said, well, I said, if a man would order this car to have a black top and a black interior. And I said, well, that's probably too, but I said, it's okay that it's a girl car because my wife owns it. So it didn't make a difference. So. So anyway, they were, uh, they were very impressed with the fit and finish on the car, which is uh, one of the things that Joe Litwin is fanatic about. He doesn't like cars that have saggy doors and poor uh, fit and finish. And he's, he strives to make it, everything as cl close to perfect as he can. So he had uh, kudos to him. He did, he did well, and the judges had lots of uh, praises for him. <clears throat> and at this particular show in the muscle car class, they were looking for cars that had a wow factor and uh, a presence on the field. And this car, because of the color and combination, sort of had that wow factor. And the, our closest competition was this. This is a 1970 uh, Plymouth GTX. This, this car has been very well restored, an excellent car. It has a, uh, well, I have a picture later on. That I'll go over that with. But that was our closest competition. And there were uh, 15 cars, I think, in our group that day. And then that's our picture after they, with our ribbon on it, where we found out that we were the uh, first place in the muscle car class that day. And we were ex excited about that. And you can kind of see in the background of the picture, the, the, uh, the golf course with the trees on the, uh, in the rough, I guess it would be called. But um, the line's the driving range. So it's just a beautiful setting for a car that day. And it was sunny all day. It was supposed to have some rain in the morning, but just didn't materialize. So it was just a beautiful day for a car show. And this is the 70 Plymouth uh, GTX. This car has uh, in the hood, in the trunk, in the trunk of my car, there's supposed to be a, in a white uh, lead pencil or lead, uh, that white uh, uh, grease chalk, the size of the tires is written on the trunk lid. Um, this would have had um, the F70 14s. This one had that in it. it. There's a little label that came on some of them on the, on the radiator, he had that. On the corner of this car, there's a stamp that says paint okay and has the initials of the guy that, or the inspector. Um, my, mine doesn't have, the, doesn't have all those labels and markings like this one does. So this one was restored probably to a higher level than what the car that I have was. But again, I didn't find any of those things when, I, uh, when we took it apart. So they may have been taken off by someone in a prior uh, restoration or something, but they just weren't there, so we didn't feel it was right to put them back on because they weren't there when we did our restaurant when we took it apart. But anyway, this is a beautiful car uh, as well. And then this is a, a Plymouth Superbird that was on the, that was one of our com competitors. It was a beautiful car, but when they painted it, um, it had overspray on all along by the windows here, by the back window on the moldings had overspray. Um, it just just wasn't a, it was a nice restoration, but it wasn't what you'd call a real quality restoration. So it's kind of disappointing at the quality of the restoration on the, on the Superbird. And let's see. 
And then one of the other classes they had was they were uh, doing a tribute to the uh, Chryslers of the uh, late 50s. And uh, this was a 58 um, Chrysler 300, and it had 32,000 actual miles on it. And it was just a beautiful car, very, very beautiful car, presented really well, and just a beautiful car. And it hadn't been restored, it's unrestored. So it's kind of nice to go around an unrestored one to see once, uh, you know, what the, th what, what things that it would not pass on in a restoration today. My wife Linda has a 61 Newport that's unrestored. It has 37,000 miles on it. And it has things like uh, paint runs on the hood. It has, uh, if you look on the quarter panels on her car, and probably on this one as well, there's about a half an inch under the, under the, rear, under the rear quarters. Oops, go back here. Wrong button. <laughs> Gotta go back again, I guess. There we go. Under the under under the quarter here is a half an inch that's gray because they were dipped in primer, so it has a primer. But it depends how far down the man that was painting it that day, how far down he bent. Sometimes he bent way underneath and it got painted, and sometimes he didn't. And on Linda's, there's probably a half an inch of gray primer where they just didn't bend down quite far enough to get everything. So when you have a car that's unrestored, it's really nice to kind of go over those and see once. A lot of times when they judge these cars, they say, well, they were all the same, and we restore them all exactly the same, but when you look at an original car, you find out they weren't that way. And I think sometimes by judging these cars, you, you lose some of those uh, individual things, the, the quirks of the factory, so to speak. If, one, if they didn't have the right bolt marking for a, for, an in, for a car, they didn't shut the whole assembly line down until someone got a bolt that was the right head marking, they used whatever they had. And um, sometimes, if they didn't have the right color and part, they used a different part. So, um, so in some ways, I think we lose that when we uh, restore all these cars to one standard. But anyway, this is a beautiful car. Oops, get wrong button. I'll get the buttons down. So th that's Joe, Joe Litwin, who sto restored the car. And this is, the, and that, that's me. We're not that fat because it's just the way I did the pictures. Just remember that, we're not that fat. It's the pictures, okay? It's my fault. But, but anyway, that was a picture we took uh, of the car just before in fact, we had it cleaned up and ready for restoration, or for judging. And then they took a picture of the three of us at the show. Make sure you notice Linda's go-go boots. She looks great in those. I, I was supposed to point that out for you. And, uh, and they gave us, this, they gave us all, they gave a, a picture for attending the show, and it's a professionally taken picture, so we're kind of happy to have that. And then this is a picture of the car with its, uh, with its ribbon, and that's Joe again in front of the hotel in Boca. It looks a lot better with the top down than it does with the top up. So Joe's always happy when they're done judging and he can rip the, the uh, top down and put the, uh, the tonneau cover on it. So, And then just have a couple more pictures. There it is in front of the uh, Boca again. And another one. So that was Boca Raton, that's the number three concourse show in the country. And let's see, um, I guess I gotta go over this real quick here. So this is the ribbon that we got at Boca Raton if you wanna come up and look at it uh, later. And then as, our, as your prize, we got a, I don't know what you do with it, but we got a, a plate from Tiffany's and it's all, it has all etched in it all the information for the Boca Raton show, but that was your prize. And it came in a blue box that you can see it if you want to come up and look at it. And we got back to, after we showed your car, you put it back in, the, in place so people could go around and look at them, but they told us to watch the box because they're worth $150, they said, on eBay. We haven't gone out to check that yet, but Linda's been keeping the box protected because you don't want to lose her box, so. Anyway, so let's see, I think that takes care of the Plymouth. So that's a number three concourse show. And then this is the one from Greenwich. And that's one that uh, Wayne Carini, you always see on Wayne Carini's show. He goes to Greenwich every year and you usually see the show. And when you go to see, when you watch it on TV, you think, wow, this is a huge place. You know, like a quarter, you know, 160 acres or something. But it's a place about the size of City Park in Manhattan. But they have the sound in the back and they use that sound uh, when they're on TV, which gives you the feeling that this is a huge place. But it's, we were surprised, that was one of the things we, we were surprised about is how small that is. But anyway, that's Linda and I in front of the sound. And we're not that fat. Again, it's my picture, so don't, you know, don't, don't hold the fatness against us, okay? 
So anyway, and then this is Joe with his family. That's his wife, Christina, his son, Joe Jr., and that's uh, Eliza. And Eliza's going to be a handful for them when she's 16. But anyway, that's some more of the sound. And uh, the, the country club is over here to the, to the left, to your left. And I have a picture of that a little later. And then the sound goes out. And again, they use this, this background, this beautiful background, which gives you the feeling of a huge place. But anyway, that's the Joe and, and uh, Liza. And there, were, there was a dock by the country club that you could walk along. We were walking along the dock by the country club. And <clears throat> all, the, all these car shows, um, the concourse shows, the night before the show, they usually have a large uh, get-together, a large dinner. And this is the one in Boca Raton. Uh, we were able to attend this one because we could afford it. Uh, but uh, the one for, for in, uh, at the, in Boca Raton, they had a, Howie Mandel was presenting at the dinner that evening, and uh, it was $500 a person to go to the dinner. So it was a little too rich for us. We weren't able to do that. But we were able to do this one here in, in uh, Greenwich, and that's my daughter Penny, and uh, that's me, the good-looking one, and that's Joe, the not-so-good-looking one, and that's my sister Joan. And... Uh, this is, the, this is the guy, wasn't we just met this guy? That's, that's Dr. Pease. No, it's not. Is that Ben? That's Dr. Pease. Oh, that's Dr. Pease. Okay. <laughs> really? All right. Guess I should have went over that earlier. But anyway, so, so that was our group. They had a great, they had a great meal, and, and we had a wonderful time. And then the next day was the, was the car show. And there we are. That's the morning of the car show. That's Joe. Oops. Keep, wrong buttons. That's Joe Jr., and of course, that's me, and I'm not that fat. It's the picture. Well, you notice I didn't make it quite so, so big, so that's the reason why, because I got too fat. But anyway, they had breakfast for us, and they had a presentation for the people on the, uh, before you did the car show. And uh, the car show that year was purchased by uh, Haggerty. And um, it was the first year that Haggerty had, was, had purchased the car show. So you know, things were a little confusing because Haggerty had rules and the people that originally set up the car show in Greenwich had rules and they hadn't quite worked out which rules they were going to go by. So depending who you talk to, you got different rules from different people. So it was a little confusing, but, they, but uh, the facilities were real nice. And again, this is the sound back here. And then the, you can see the cars are all set up by the sound and there are people over here. And if they take a picture with a camera looking that way, it looks like you're in this huge space. But again, it's about the size of the city park in Manhattan. So it started out like that. It looked like we we're going to have rain all day, like it would be a bad, bad day. And this is, my, this is our rooting crew. This is Christina, Joe's wife. And that's my um, sister, um, Joan. That's my daughter, Penny. And that's my wife, Linda. And they all are aren't that fat. It's just the picture that I did. Okay, so don't, don't hold the picture against me. Okay, I got to get all this right. And this is, the, this is our cars lined up uh, in a row, the, the group that we we're in competition with. This is a beautifully restored 1968 uh, Mercury Cougar, and not a light on it worked. And this is a beautiful Pontiac uh, um, GTO, and not all the lights on that car worked. The cars were so evenly matched that day in competition that they decided that they were going to go down the, down the line and check who had lights and who didn't, what lights worked and what lights didn't work. That's how they differentiated between the cars, so they were that close in the competition. And I'd been to, uh, when, I, when we went to um, the uh, Chrysler Nationals in uh, Ohio, you had a, everything on the car had to work, so I had everything working on the Plymouth. I actually replaced that headlight the, night, the day before we, let, we took it or for, the, for the show uh, because it uh, wasn't working. And sure enough, when we got all done, our car was the only one that all the lights worked on. So that's how we got first place. So, And you can kind of see the setup here. That's the, it's pretty small from here to where, the, where it ended behind us was, again, about the size of the uh, um, park in Manhattan from east to west. This year they had a... Um, a, a region that was called uh, Junkers to, to Concourse or whatever, cars that were, were either uh, lemons, when, oh no, it's lemons to Concourse because they were lemons when they came from the factory. And there, it was things like the, um, that uh, Mercury, or no, the Mustang, uh, or the uh, Ford uh, Maverick was one of them as an example. And uh, little cars, that, or the Vega, the Chevy Vega that didn't make it, you know, things like that. There were lemons 
and they had a whole section of those cars, and it was kind of interesting to walk through that and see the, the lemons de concourse. And then uh, this, is, this is Charles. This is the man that approached us in 2019 at the show in, uh, we, did, we were at the AACA uh, uh, Nationals, or show in Hershey. And um, I, I went to do something, and Linda was taking care of the car. She said, yeah, I'll, take, I'll answer any questions. She's taking on all comers. If you have any questions, just ask Linda. She knows everything there is to know about the car. But anyway, she's there with the car, and Charles comes up and says what a nice car it was. And he says, have you ever been to a concourse show? And Linda said, no. He said, would you like to go to one? And she says, just me, let me get my husband. So, <laughs> so anyway, so that's Charles. Uh, and when, when we came to look at our car, you know, he had on a trench coat and looked, looked kind of grungy. So I'm like, well, I don't know, who's, who is this guy, you know? So anyway, it's kind of interesting to me. He's a great, great individual. He's a master judge for the uh, Greenwich Show in charge of the muscle car class. And uh, he's the one that was the judges for the Plymouth. And he was telling me here what, that our car won because of the fit and finish and how uh, wonderfully restored it was. And the gentleman behind him here, um, has is, is been a Mopar judge for 28 years, and he said it was the best restoration he'd seen in 28 years. And he actually contacted Joe and asked him if he'd like to be a, um, a, uh, an instructor at uh, a school that he set up uh, for Mopars, and Joe declined. But I thought that was a great uh, uh, feather in his hat that he was asked to do that. But anyway, he's explaining to me how, how they picked our car because of the fit and finish and how well it presented and also that all the lights worked on it. And then, uh, let's see, and then this is, this is the ribbon. We got, we got first place in the muscle car class at Greenwich, and um, everybody was excited. And then, at, when, you got, when you got your award, uh, you, there, you drove around, you, you came up from, from here, and then you drove around, and you'll be in front of the sound. I'll show a picture of that in just a second. They took pictures of the cars in front of the sound, but that's our group driving up to uh, get our award. And then this is the, again, this is the sound in the background, and this is a, a little thing, a little frame thing they had set up, and they'd pull the car up here. I'm sorry, I don't have a picture of the car in front of the frame, because we were all in the car, so nobody thought about taking a picture. But anyway, so this is a, the, the picture of the car be here with the sound in the background. Excuse me, that's what they'd show you on TV, so you get the impression that this was a huge place again. But anyway, that's Penny, and that's me, and that's uh, her significant other, Ben, Dr. Ben P. So let's see here. And then some of the cars over there, this is uh, an Austin Healey, and uh, I think it was a 58, if I remember right. And that particular year, they, they didn't paint the car. This is just, it, was, it has an aluminum body, and that's polished aluminum. It was a polished aluminum body. It's really impressive. And that's the back. You can see my picture, and it's so polished. That was one of the, one of the cars that was that was uh, on display there. And then uh, I'm not into old cars, old old cars, I guess. So, but someone told, or uh, was it Chris said it was a, a Packard, he thinks. So, this is one of the Packards that was there. And you kind of see some of the other, older cars in the background. And again, this is kind of where the show field started and went that way. So it's not it's not a huge field. And again, from the back here to the front where the ocean starts is about, again, like the size of the park in, Man in Manhattan from east to west. And let's see. This is a, uh, what did you tell me this was, Chris? Duesenberg. Duesenberg. There we go. Yeah, Duesenberg. Thank you. So I told you Linda should be giving the, the, uh, the, the lecture here. But anyway, the Duesenberg, they had a row of Duesenbergs, the doozies. And they were kind of beautiful cars to see, so... And then this is, in down, this is in downtown Greenwich. This is about two blocks from where the car show was. And this is actually, you can see a residential, combination residential uh, um, commercial area. And we're going to walk down here to the corner, make a right here, and then kind of right where this building is, is a restaurant. And there they are. That's Christina, and that's Liza and Joey again. And the restaurant is just kind of a little hole in the wall, but the food is fantastic. That's their pancakes. I thought everybody would be interested in that, but we ate we there several mornings in a row, and the food was always excellent. So it's kind of interesting to see what's, what's really close by to these car shows and, and meet the people and things. Actually, that's the best thing about the, this hobby is the people that you meet along the way. There's, everybody has stories and things about the people they met along the way, 
And then this is the last slide, but this is the, um, again, this is the uh, sound. And then this is the um, patio, the uh, deck, or the, yeah, the deck or patio for the uh, uh, country club that's there. And that's where we had our dinner the evening that we, that we uh, before the show, they had a dinner for all the participants. And it was on this sound here. It was just a beautiful setting. So um, it's just a beautiful area. So that was Greenwich. Let me see, I think that's it. Yep, that's it, okay. So um, from the Greenwich show, we got the, the blue ribbon, and we, it was for the best in class, the muscle car class. And then when you drove up, we got this uh, plaque. And uh, th that was a plaque from them. And it's a, it's a good husband beater, so I don't say too many bad things in front of Linda when she has this in her hand. But anyway, so that's, that's two of the awards that we have here. And then before we went to the uh, concourse show in, her, in Greenwich, um, we got invited to the concourse show in Des Moines. There's one in Des Moines, Iowa. And you should apply to there. I got an email that they're looking for applicants, so if you're interested, it's online. You do an online application. And it's a great uh, car show to go to. We went there because we wanted to kind of find out what concourse shows were like before we went to the one in uh, Greenwich. We got second place in the muscle car class in Des Moines, and it was a learning experience for us. We learned a lot of things there about concourse shows. Um, and then uh, <clears throat> our car, we've shown it at the AACA, and uh, we have the, uh, get these in order for you. This is the this is the first award that you get they have four four awards at the AACA. They have the first junior and to get to get the first junior you have to have uh, 365 out of 400 points. And then they give you this award your first junior. And then the, then the next one that you get is your senior award which is this one here. No, that's Grand Nationals, I'm sorry. This one. It's kind of like the car that uh, Doug has in the lobby there after that. So anyway, that's your senior award. And to get that one, you have to have 375 out of uh, 400 points. And then you go for your uh, national award. And let's see, this is the first one that you get. This, you have to have 385 out of 400 points to get this award, and it's your, your first national award. And then the next one, the, the highest one that they have is the um, Senior Grand National Award, and for this one you need 395 out of 400 points to get the award. So it took, it took us four years to get those awards because you could only get one a year, and then with COVID they changed that now to where you can get two a year. So take you, if you, everything, well, the, the national awards is a show that they have once a year, so it would take you three years to get the four awards now, or it used to take four, or take four years. Oh, in fact, this is a little award that they put on the headlights in Des Moines. If you were selected for award, they gave you a little blue right ribbon to let you know you were accepted for award, and then when you drove up to get your award, they told you which one it was that you received, so that was their system there. And let's see. This is the one, Joe, Joe Litwin got this one in New York. It's the uh, annual New York Mopar's, uh, Mopar Day, and uh, it was the chairman's favorite award, and he took it there, and it was uh, the first time that uh, he'd shown it. Um, he'd taken it golfing and things like that, but it was the first time he showed it in New York, and that's the award that he got for it. Um, and let's see. And then probably the award they were most proud of is this one. I can't touch it because I don't have the gloves on, but that, that's the, uh, it, we, it's a national award. And what uh, the AACA does is they have a national award committee that goes around at all the car shows and picks out uh, cars that can compete for a national award. The year that we got this one, they picked out 3,000 cars out of the cars that had been shown that year out of all their, uh, out of all their shows. And then out of those 3,000, they sent uh, invitations to 300 cars, 300 owners to apply for the uh, national award. To do that, you had to fill out a, a paperwork about your car and send in some photographs. 
And we were very fortunate. We were happy. We got the Chocolate Town Award, the Hershey Award, and it's sponsored by the Hershey Corporation and the Hershey family. And we've been to Hershey many times, and it reminds us of all those trips. So we're really proud to have that award. And the year that we received it, there were 296 people that sent their uh, applications back. And out of those 390 or 296, they, they presented uh, 65 awards. So we we're very, very proud to get that. And that's the awards. Um, I guess I'll, I'll open it up to questions then, because I want to make sure everybody has any questions that we get your questions answered. Um, direct them to Linda, though, because she's the one that, she knows more about this than I do. But anyway, does anybody have any particular questions I try to answer for you? Yes? What were the hardest to find parts for your car? Hardest to find parts? In, interior parts. Anything in the interior of that car is terrible to find. Um, the, the engine, the engine, uh, Joe has a person in, in New York that rebuilds the engine, so when they rebuilt the engine, we had all the engine parts. Sometimes those small parts like, a, uh, oh, I don't know, the wire hangers aren't, aren't, aren't that hard to get, but there are a lot of small parts that are specific to a certain year, some that are hard to find. The engine wasn't too bad, and when they redid the engine, they did the hard, hardened valve seat so we could run unleaded gas in it. The transmission uh, is a Brewer transmission, I think, in Ohio. Does all the four speeds? We sent ours in there, and, and it was uh, toast. So we just got a uh, year correct, uh, model correct, uh, date correct transmission for the car, and um, so that wasn't too bad. The differential was, was we didn't have to end the differential had been rebuilt and was okay after after it was rebuilt, so that was okay. But the interior was terrible. It's um, a lot of the particularly the rear quarters on the on those are very difficult to find. The, if the top is down, then the sun uh, deteriorates them. And then people back then used to take and cut holes in and put speakers in, which was cool to do back then, but it makes it terrible to, you can't, re, it's hard to restore them or impossible to restore them to a usable quarter uh, to use on a restoration. But that's the thing that comes to mind, those interior parts were very difficult to find. Any other questions? What do you pull it with? Oh, I, we have a GMC uh, diesel, so what, what our trailer. We, people ask, do you drive it? And I, I don't drive it. It has 360 some miles on it since it was restored and Joe put those on it. Um, he told me it had to be broken in. So after, I, after riding with him, I don't know, that's a pretty rough break in. So I don't know. My, da my daughter says she likes this car best of all because it goes from zero to 70 in second gear real fast. So, so I don't know. I don't ride with her either, so. We, well, if, if you ever buy, go by our place, we're seven miles east of town and there's a big hill that goes up uh, to Flush Road. And this car, when we first got it, didn't have a, somebody put a manual choke on it instead of a, an automatic choke. So my daughter had driven a few times when it was hot out, so it didn't matter where the, you know, if the choke was, was off. But the first time it was cold, she took it for a drive, and I forgot to tell her to open the choke. I started and pulled the choke on it. I forgot to tell her to open the choke. So I could hear her. She goes around the corner and starts up 24, headed west, and, she, I could tell she had the pedal to the floor and that thing was coughing and bucking and hacking and everything going up the hill. And then she came back, she said, something's wrong with the engine. I said, well, I said, hey, let's take the choke off and see how it does. So, but anyway. <laughs> we, we, we knew we made it when we made the Manhattan Mercury. Back in 2009, we have a 79 Cordoba 300 because it was uh, gold certified at Mopar Nationals in uh, Ohio. And so my, the ladies from my office told the Mercury that and they said, we well, ought to do a feature on these people, so they did a feature on Linda and I. Doug has one too, but I, I didn't realize that. I would, would have looked his paper up too, but I didn't realize that. But anyway, and Doug has some beautiful cars, by the way. He says, he's kind of he's kind of modest about that. He says, oh, he says, mine aren't very good, but he, his cars are all beautifully restored. So particularly his, his Cadillac, if you get a chance to see that, that's a beautiful, beautiful restoration. And as far as these car shows are concerned, um, we've gone to a bunch of local car shows and people tell me, you know, I don't like those major car shows because they're too picky. Well, they're kind of picky because they're supposed to, they have, they, have rules, they have rules for all these car shows, and the rules are different between, um, oh, like a car show like at, at uh, Hershey, where, where they want to be all original. The way they were delivered to the dealers, essentially what they say, that's what it says in the bottom line, is they want it the way it was delivered by the dealer. Well, if, if, a de if you have on your, if you have Kragers on your car and they didn't come from the factory, 
they ain't going to argue with you. It's just sort of that's the rules. It's the rules. And that's why I say they're, they're bad in a way because you lose the individuality of the flaws of every car, but they're supposed to be the way they were delivered to the dealers. So you can't go to those shows and expect to win if you have Kragers on your car. That just isn't going to fly. But the shows with the Concourse shows, they're looking at the uh, proven provenance of the car, uh, how, how it presents on the show field. They want cars that present very well and have pizzazz. They want them to be restored to factory if, it, if, if you're showing it. And you have to have a certain level. You have to have been to a certain, like we had to have a, the senior award from the uh, AACA to qualify for the uh, concourse shows. That way they know that someone's judged the car before and that it has, you know, it has credentials to go to those shows. Um, so I, I, I'm a big pro proponent of going to shows. If you, have, you go to shows, you meet people. I, did, I didn't know about uh, concourse shows having an application online. Anybody can apply. Uh, we were just fortunate enough that at the show, Car Charles came up to us and invited us to apply. You don't have to have an invitation. Everybody can apply. You just go out online, and then there's a form that you fill out there, and you submit that, and a, and a committee looks at your vehicle and decides whether they want it or not. And every year at the concourse shows, they usually uh, have a uh, feature of a particular era or year of, of vehicles. So if you happen to apply the year that they're featuring your vehicle, you have a much better chance, I think, of getting accepted than if you randomly apply. But you have to do those things and um, take those steps in order to be able to get the awards and things that we have here today. So, and so I always tell people at the car shows that when they say that, I say, well, you got to realize there are rules and you have to kind of play by the rules, but don't get upset if you have something that's non-factory and they get, and they ding you on it. Just go home and change it and go back again and try. So that's, we, we didn't, we've been working at this for a long time. It took us a while to figure out what they wanted at the different shows. We, our first car was my Cordoba, and we brought that back a lot of times where we've been dinged on things. And um, one of the problems with my Cordoba is it was the first one that, of that era that was, was judged. So the judges said, well, we don't even have judging standards for this one, but we're, we're going to go by what we've been able to find out online about your car. So I got dinged on things and changed things, and it just took a while to get to where, to where we got a, a gold standard award from the um, Mopar National. So I encourage people to go to car shows. I encourage you to apply to get to, to go to these um, major shows. And if, you keep, if you're not interested in applying, at least go and look at the cars because they have some really beautiful, beautiful cars at these shows. And if you um, go to a concourse show, you know that they've, they've met the standard for the AACA and that they have like 475 out of 400 points. So that's a beautiful car. So anyway, I guess I can stop with that. You get tired of hearing me talk, so go ahead. Um, for these major car shows, what would be the closest to Manhattan? Uh, as far as I know, Des Moines would be the closest for a concourse show to Manhattan. And that show is held in downtown Des Moines. Um, they have uh, plenty of parking, and it's in a, a city park down there, kind of a, you know, I call it a city park. And um, they, have, they have, I don't know how many cars they had, probably 200 or 300 cars that were judged that, that, that time that we were there. The problem with being the one that shows the car is you have to be with the car. Someone has to be with the car all the time, so it's hard for you as a, as a participant to go around and look at everything. But after they judge the car, then I would always try to run around and see what was there. But they just had some beautiful cars in Des Moines, and I wish I would have had more time to look around. But again, they're all restored to a very, very high standard. So if you want to see some beautifully restored cars, you're pretty much guaranteed them. And they have all classes of cars at the, at the major shows as well. We went to... Um, uh, uh, AACA. If, 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 by the way, if you're not a member of the AACA, it's $35 a year, which is sort of not a lot of money. You know, it's just not a lot of money. And then you, you get to go participate in their organization. They're the oldest car uh, club in, the, in America. They, they've been there around 75 years. They have a, a bi-monthly uh, letter that they send out about their shows and about they feature different cars and, and talk about different techniques for restorations and things. And if you go to their car shows, you're always guaranteed to see a great car show. So if you get a chance, try to belong to the club. You don't have to belong to the club to go to the shows, but if you belong to the club, you have a little more interest. You have some skin invested in the game, you know. So try to go to their shows. And um, I was going to tell you one other thing. Now, this old age has caught me again, so let's see. Anyway, oh, the, the, if you want to go to the, the biggest car show in the country is Hershey the AACA show in Hershey, Pennsylvania, and that's usually the second weekend in September every year. And they have 9,000 vendors at that show. 
So if it's made in the auto industry, made somewhere, you'll find it at that show. And you could, it starts on Wednesday and usually ends on Saturday, and you can walk all four days and not see everything. It's just a huge show. They have usually around 1,200 cars that they judge, and they set up the show field so it's from the earliest cars in the car field. As you walk through the field, they get, they get newer and newer. So you can see the changes in the auto industry as you're walking through the show field. So it's a really wonderful way they set that up. And that's the show. Uh, we went to one in, um, well, most of them are that way, but we went to one particularly in Buffalo, New York, and they had um, all sorts of uh, steam engines. Uh, you don't see many of those, but they had steam cars, steam, steam driven vehicles. And then they also had a lot of the um, Duesenbergs, uh, Cadillacs, Cords, uh, Pierce Arrows. And the Pierce Arrow Museum is in uh, Buffalo, New York. And if you get a chance to see that museum, it's well worth the admission fee. Inside the museum, they have a uh, gas station that was designed by Lloyd Frank Wright. And, as, and that's an actual gas station that's built inside the museum. Doug ought to get one of those here. It'd be a big draw, you know. So anyway, but it costs $850 for the privilege of building the, the building inside the museum to use the Frank Lloyd Wright um, designs to build it. But he had things that were really ahead of time. He, he, his gas stations all had a cover over the, the a portico over the, over the um Tank, over the uh, gas, uh, gas pumps, so you'd pull up under this portico and put gas in your car. Every other gas station, it was just open to the elements, you pulled up and put gas in. If it was raining, you got rain on you. If it was snowing, you got snow on you. And then all the other gas stations had a, had a uh, toilet out back, uh, and uh, the, uh, Frank Lloyd Wright had indoor toilets in his gas station, which was new for the time. And they also had a portico on the gas station that was covered where you could sit and eat your lunch. Because a lot of people at that time carried lunch with them, and they'd stop at a roadside stand or something, or a little roadside park to eat lunch. Well, he had put that, included that in his gas station. And the greatest thing I thought was it has uh, two 40-foot copper poles that go off the roof, and under the roof they stored 1,000 gallons of gasoline. So that didn't make sense to me, because they looked like two lightning rods to 1,000 gallons of gasoline. So anyway, but that's, if you get a chance, it's in, it's in um, Buffalo. It's worth, well worth the trip to go see that. As, yes? There's a Frank Lloyd Wright gas station in Cloquet, Minnesota that's still in use. Oh, is there? 66 station. And that's where I found out they stored 1,000 gallons of gas in the second floor. Yeah, I know. But with two 40-foot poles, that didn't make sense to me. But anyway, they didn't ask me, so that's okay. The other thing is, uh, let's see, what was I going to tell you? Um, oh, the other thing is, if you get to Auburn, Indiana, uh, the AACA has a meet there every year, and that's where they um, made the um, the Auburn, the car of the Auburn, and they made the um, Cords, was it? Cord, I think. Anyway, they had the original the original uh, manufacturing plant is there, and uh, and it's um, you can tour it, and it's a uh, an Art Deco building. The building itself is like a like a treasure. It's worth just seeing the building itself. And for the women, they use some of the design factors in the building to make earrings. So you'd be real interested in some of the earrings uh, from that place. And uh, they have the, um, the cars are, they have cars as a three-floor three floor building. And they have the um, uh, cars on, on display on the three-floor. So it's well worth the trip to see that. So anyway, I guess I'll stop there. I think that's probably took another 10 minutes. I don't know. We'll see. But, any other questions? Okay. Oh, sorry. Well, let's give Jim a warm thank you. You know, uh, he kept commenting that the pictures were distorted and they made them look heavy. But why did the cars look okay? It was just the people. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tom. What is this one? You know, he talked about all these car shows being so picky, and I can attest to that. My wife and I have gone to some Cadillac Grand Nationals, and every year we've taken our car, it gets dinged for something. And you have to have evidence that that's, if you argue with me, you have to have evidence that you're correct. I remember the last one I went to, I got dinged because my antenna had a little ring around it. They said that that was a two year later model, it wasn't on a 61. I didn't have any proof. Later I had proof, and I sent to the judges so they could make amendments to their the thing. But if you don't have the evidence there with you, you still get dinged, but uh, talking about the headlights on the car, I remember one of those shows I went to too, 
they were had their 265 Cadillac Fleetwoods, and they had to turn their lights on, all the lights came on. So then they went even further and they put a light gauge in front of each headlight to measure, I think, the light that was coming out of it to see if they were even. That's how picky they were at this car show. Those cars were steps above what mine were. My lights worked, but I didn't have to measure mine. But anyway, they're fun to go to, and it's always fun to see the cars. And, you just you just can't let them, you know, hurt your feelings. It's just the set of rules, and they're going by the rules. So don't let it hurt your feelings. Just take it and move move on, you know. And if you find the evidence, like Doug said later on, just present it, and they'll make the changes for you. But uh, just don't take it personally. That's right. That's right. It's, easy, it's easier to say to say that than to do that. But I think that's the thing. You know, just don't take it personally. My my '79 Cordova 300 I've owned since it was new. When I got it from Chrysler, the day I picked it up at the dealership. It had a red interior, uh, yeah, red interior, and the moldings around the back window were blue. And the door panels, one on the, on the driver's side was a 300 panel, and the one on the rider's side was one from a, from a Dodge Magnum, which was the same car, just a different uh, Dodge versus a Chrysler. So, uh, and the heat shields were missing underneath, and it says right on the build sheet that where heat shields already has zero. They didn't put them on. It was something that if they didn't have it, they didn't shut the whole factory down to get it. If you didn't need it, it just came out off the line, and that's the way it was. It was it wasn't something that was critical, so I had a hard time getting them to change those things because the Chrysler's response was, "Well, it's it's functional. If it was functional. That was good enough." So I had a real hard time to get the those things changed on my 300. And when I took it apart, the the little moldings around the back, they just took the blue ones and spray painted them red and put them back on. So that fixed that problem, and then the door panels, and rather than send me the whole panel from a 300, they just the, the panels made in three pieces. They sent me the piece, the middle piece, that was that was the one for uh, a, a Magnum, and took my door panel all apart and put all that one piece in and put it back on. So I don't know, it just kind of doesn't make sense sometimes, but that's how it works. So sorry, go ahead. No, well, thank you all again for coming out today. I remind you, our next one will be uh, in April. It's April 1st, April Fool's Day. I'll be the speaker, which fits right in with April Fool's Day. <laughs> We're going to talk about quirky automotive innovation. So it'll be a fun, fun tread talk. So join us again next month on Saturday, April 1st. And thank you again, Jim and Linda, for being here. Thank you all for coming out.